Hey guys, my name is Ben with Ben's Appliances and I am going to do component testing and calibration on this Whirlpool washer. We just got this one in stock uh, last night and it's probably a piece of junk. I haven't cleaned it so it is dirty and we are wanting to see what all is wrong with this system. So there's error code you can look up. There is calibration and troubleshooting. So I've done a video on error codes. Now we're going to try calibration troubleshooting. To start off with, this washer is like really nasty. Um, it's about three years old. It's a Whirlpool WTW, uh, let's see, 4800. Right there is the model number and serial number on it. And this one's probably gonna have some problems. I already had issues with the lid lock here. I had already needed to replace the lid lock just to get this unit to be able to turn on. It got stuck on sensing mode right here, which means that the lid lock won't even work. So I've already gone in and replaced the lid lock because I can't even calibrate this thing until that was replaced. You can do error codes on this model if the lid lock is bad and it was an error code and there's a few others. So we're going to try some component testing on this to see what we can do. But before we begin to component test, we need to allow the lid to open and close while in the locked position. Whirlpool washers like this one don't have an easy way to bypass the locking system, so instead we're going to take this striker off and place it into the lid lock to trick the washer into thinking that the lid is always closed. To do this, we need to remove two Torx T15 screws from the top of the lid. You can use a screwdriver, and in this case I use a drill gun to take the entire striker system off the washer and put it into the lid locking mechanism. When you are taking off the lid lock striker, it's important to know the orientation of the unit, the striker, because it will only fit into the lid lock mechanism one way. I had to spend a minute trying to figure out how to get it in the mechanism, only to find out I was trying to put it in backwards. Once the striker is fit inside of the lock, you can then open and close the lid without it impeding any tests you want to run on the washer itself, such as the auto test which tests each component individually. With the striker in place, we're going to put the unit into diagnostics by spinning the dial counterclockwise at least one full turn. From there, the knob needs turned right three times, left once, then right one last time. If you get five green lights flashing in parallel, you've entered diagnostics properly. Now we can go through the various settings and find the tests that we want to run today, namely the auto test and calibration. But here's the entire list of modes for this washer and many other Whirlpool, Amana, or Maytag washers. The most useful tests are the first four. I made a video about the error codes and what they mean, so if you want to know about those, click the pop-up in the video or look in the video description for the link. With the spin mode light lit up, you can press the start button to begin the automatic component test to see what may be wrong with your washing machine. If it starts properly, the red lid lock light will turn on and then begin a sequence of green lights indicating what position the test is currently on. Now, if you see in what you hear doesn't match the description in this video, make sure to look for the technical manual that's inside your machine. I found the manual for this machine inside the washer casing, which required me to open the lid up and look inside. You could also probably tip the machine backwards and have enough room to reach in and grab the manual from underneath. I've noticed that running error codes on this machine was slightly different than the Amana diagnostic video that I posted a month ago, so you may want to look at the manual to verify, but the codes were pretty much the same, just the uh, lights showing up were slightly different. So far this machine is running the tests fine, so I'm going to turn the volume up on the machine and let it run tests for a little while with the descriptions popping up as we go.
something quick to note, if the motor does not agitate as fast as what you see in this video, then either the motor or the capacitor may be bad on your washer. Two quick things to note, the suspension rods are shot on this unit so it's going to go unbalanced very fast. However, the basket sped up extremely fast on this unit, indicating that both the capacitor, shifter, and motor are all in good working order on this unit. Once the unit has completed its spin cycle, it will need to finish the slowdown and braking process until the lid lock is ready to release. This process could take between 20 and 30 seconds to complete depending on your washer. Once the lid lock has been released, the auto test process and procedure is going to be fully completed and then you can make a decision on what components, if any, you need to change on the machine. Once the green done light is illuminated on the washer, you are now fully done with the auto component test cycle and you can move on now to calibration. To reset the washer for calibration, make sure no selection lights are on, then rotate the knob at least one full turn counterclockwise. Then repeat the steps to put the washing machine into diagnostics. The second time is always much faster than the first. Select the fourth mode labeled spin and press start to begin calibration. The washer will activate the lid lock, then the selection lights will continue to cycle during the calibration mode. This will take a few minutes and make sure there are no extra objects like clothes in the washer during the calibration. Once the washer cycle is complete, the washer will flash all lights green and then finally release the lid lock. Once that's done, your machine has been calibrated and you are done with everything. Make sure to put the lid lock back in place for safety purposes and you are all good to go.